Councilwoman Keisha Bottoms is the only black female candidate running for mayor of Atlanta. Keisha's commitment to community and public service has been recognized by the YWCA Academy of Women Achievers. She's sponsored many legislation as Take a Stand and Entrepreneurship of Women. Keisha, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy to have you here. I am so happy to be here. Yes, I'm glad. You look gorgeous. Well, thank you, and so do you. Thank you. I know you. we have a mutual shoe admiration <laughs> thing going on here. <laughs> I love those shoes. Thank you. <laughs> Keisha, you're running for mayor of the city of Atlanta. Talk to me about this journey. God is amazing. Isn't he? He dreams dreams so much bigger than we can dream for ourselves. And I sometimes get very full thinking about my journey and how all the things that happen in life and you think that it's the absolute worst thing that could possibly happen. Mm -hmm. And as my grandmother used to remind me, when you love the Lord, mm. you know that it's all for your good. So I was born and raised in this city, and I have really lived and experienced both ends of this city. Mm -hmm. um, my father was an entertainer. He was world-renowned. My parents met at the Royal Peacock when he came to perform. The Royal Peacock? The Royal Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had an extraordinary childhood because my dad was an entertainer and we traveled and Elton John got his start playing for my dad. My dad wow. sings Major Lance. And a very happy family, happy whole family. And then suddenly it all changed. Um, my parents initially separated. And I now know that my mother and that my mom and dad were losing our house. Mm -hmm. And we moved into an apartment. And shortly after that, my dad went to prison. And that's when everything that I knew about life changed. changed forever. And that really was probably one of the hardest things that's ever happened to me, to watch my dad go to prison. Um, but I can tell you, as I sit here today, it is the thing that has made me resilient. Mm -hmm. And it gives me a strength that I sometimes don't even know that I have. Mm -hmm. And it made me push and push to want more. Right. Because I always wanted to be able to have more the right way. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about Atlanta and 4% of kids having an opportunity to rise out of poverty, I've been there. Mm -hmm. Because when my dad went to prison, we literally were one check away from being on the street. Right. And uh, we were that family, we were one check away from being poor, from mm -hmm. being destitute. Mm -hmm. And I sit here today as a candidate right. for mayor, but as a member of city council, mm -hmm. an attorney, mm -hmm. I've been a judge. Wow. Um, I sold a stadium <laughs> as executive director of the Recreation Authority, mm -hmm. and I am really a testament to what's possible in this city. And with that, oh my, that's, I, what made you feel as if now I'm going to come into politics? <laughs> I've done so many things. I You didn't even uh. have to. I, and, you know what I mean? You don't really, it wasn't something that, I mean, you have really done a lot and you really did well for yourself. What well, made you, when did you realize this moment right now is when I feel as if I need to do this? I can tell you the day and the hour. Tell it me. was November 29th, the 12 o'clock hour, and I knew that I knew. I knew that my preparation was there, mm -hmm. and I quite honestly didn't know if it was the thing that I had in my heart to do. Right. Um, it was November 29th mm -hmm. of 2015, and I didn't say a word to anybody because I wanted you know. to be sure. And mm -hmm. I was in the midst of trying to sell Turner Field, mm -hmm. and I didn't wow. want my decisions about running for mayor to interfere with that, that very important transaction. Right. Um, but it really has been about my four kids. Mm -hmm. I have four children who I love more than anything on this earth. And I can't leave their future up to chance. I have three boys and a girl. And I talk about the things that I want for them mm -hmm. and what I want this city to be for them. Mm -hmm. And I can't look to somebody else to do it. Right. There's so many things that our city is faced with, so many challenges. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it goes back to community and what we're doing for our families in this city. And that's why I'm here. And that's why I'm not somewhere relaxing on the beach. Yep. Um, pushing forward mm -hmm. for my kids and everybody else's. Right. 
Talk to me about Take a Stand and Women Entrepreneurship because I just found out about this. So, you know, I feel as if I need to tell the world too. You've done so much, like I said earlier, that I think some things get lost. I think you're right because I think as a woman, it is counterintuitive for us to toot our own, our own horns. Right. We're so used to doing the work that we sometimes don't wave the flag, but there's so many things that I really am proud of that I've done on city council, including initiatives related to women and businesses and right. uh, push for equal pay for women, mm -hmm. um, but also displacement free zones mm -hmm. that we are now seeing coming up in the city to combat gentrification to make sure that as our city redevelops that people have incentives mm -hmm. and assistance with keeping their houses so that all the good things that are happening in the city is good for everybody everyone in this city and this is why you're running oh absolutely yeah absolutely I'm I'm honored to run mm -hmm. because it's a very hard job right. but I also know that you have to have good people doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. And I know as a kid when things were so very challenging mm -hmm. in my household, right. there was this city that I could look to and this leadership mm -hmm. that offered something so much bigger than what I saw in my circumstances. Yeah. And I had a city and a community that believed in me and told me I could do more and be more. My mother owned a small business mm -hmm. and she went back to school to make sure we could make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And my dad was a good person who made a bad decision. Right. And so um, our kids have to have something bigger and better than exactly. themselves. And you have to have leaders at the table making those decisions. Now, you're in a competitive sport, shall I say. <laughs> 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 why? What would you tell someone? What, why should I vote for you? I would say that you should vote for me because mm -hmm. I am the most qualified. You will not find anybody who works harder than me. Right. And my record speaks loud and clear mm -hmm. as to what I will do for this city because I have the ability, because of my background, mm -hmm. I can sit and have the same conversation on Bankhead right. that I can have in Buckhead, Buckhead. and I don't believe I love it. it. And you have to have somebody who gets it from both sides. Yeah. You have to have somebody who gets the needs of the community in a very authentic way. But you also have to go to a boardroom in Buckhead and be able to have a conversation with the business community mm -hmm. and make sure that the city is rolling the way that it needs to roll mm -hmm. so that all of our communities are uplifted and moving forward. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm running and that's why everybody in this city should support me. The one thing that my dad always taught me mm -hmm. is that it never hurts to try. You get a no, so what? Exactly. And so I'm running for mayor because That's I it. intend to be mayor That's and right. I intend to win. And if I don't get every vote in this city, I'll keep pushing. Keisha, I can't thank you enough for coming here. Thank you for having oh, me. Anytime. And we'll be back with Melita. I'm telling you, you are going to love her. We got to support. We got to teach. We got to have results. Be in contact.